Cynthia Heron grew up in a home filled with harmony. Her father, Earl Heron, was a musician from a very early age and encouraged his daughter to pursue her dreams of following in his imposing footsteps, and so she did. Trudging forward with an impressive resume of her own that began in the early 1980s with the release of her first recording. She's turned her musical efforts in uh, recent years to philanthropic efforts, and she joins us this morning to talk about that. Cynthia Herring, thanks so much for coming by today. Thank you. Hello, Omaha. Yes. Uh, you're based in Florida right now, but you are an Iowa native, and that's where you got your musical start, thanks to Dad. That's exactly right. You know, I grew up, as you were saying, in a home filled with music, and uh, my mother had just a passion for music, and when she met my dad and he sang that magical song for her, mm. I don't know why I just do, she fell in love with him, and so they had a lot of big band music around the house, and so we always listened to music. Music was big for us. You've been working with children, specifically, it's just, just one of your efforts, but it's called World Nation, the organization, and we've just heard your collaboration with the kids there on that particular album. The album is called Cruising in My Wagon. Uh, tell us about how this developed and, and what your goal is. Well, Cruising in My Wagon album is a doo pop and swing record. That particular song was inspired by my little nephew, Pierce. And I must tell you, Pierce lives in uh, this area, and it was for him uh, when he was a baby. And originally, you know how songs are born, uh, my sister Michelle sent me a picture of Pierce in his little green wagon, and uh, we all probably rode in those wagons at one point, and then as time goes on, we get into our wagon, you know, our cars, our hot vehicles, so the song came from that, and um, I wanted the kids with my album to be able to have a chance to get in the recording studio. Mm. That's not easy. Uh, we have a lot of talented kids, and, and they're doing dancing and singing, and we thought, wow, wouldn't it be nice if they could get in the studio? So I took them into Morris Sound in Tampa, and they did real live recording sessions where Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, Jennifer Hudson, and trans Siberian Orchestra recorded there. Mm. Now, of course, uh, this grew in part out of the fact that uh, you've been working with these kids and others like them in uh, teaching English as a second language. Is that right? That's exactly right. I went to the University of Northern Iowa. That's where I got my degree in ESL and English. And I've always loved working with students, people from different countries from around the world. My youngest students were four and my oldest student, actually in Chicago, was 84. He actually mm. got his GED at 84. Yeah. So having worked with these students from so many different countries and cultures, uh, I originally started World Nation in Muscatine, Iowa, as a diversion for kids maybe getting pulled into gangs, which I didn't not feel was right, a misuse of adults in kids' lives. Uh, and we got them going into a culture club. They started singing in all these languages. I got a little seed money, and before we knew it, we did our first album, Welcome to Our World, and that was in nine languages. So it helps that I had these ESOL students who spoke all these languages. Mm. Uh, in a way, your students become your teachers. Sometimes they're your best teachers. Now, you've got those local family connections here. We we hope your family is listening into you this, this morning. This is one of your rare visits to the uh, area. But, uh, of course, one of your other local connections is that uh, your mother, Carol Herring, was uh, a very, very well-known teacher in the Davenport schools. Uh, and much of your fundraising uh, goes not just toward uh, World Nation, but also to the Carol Herring Memorial Scholarship Fund. Tell us about that. Oh, that's that's exactly right. Uh, my mother passed away in 2012. Anybody that knew her, she lived and breathed children, education. She had a passion for it. It was her joy, her pleasure. Um, she actually, if you can imagine, after she retired, and she retired to Florida, and then she came to the uh, Papillion area, and she actually, a substitute taught. there. She's got some fr friends probably over at Trumbull Creek, Golden Hills, Anderson Grove, and Carriage Hill. And they loved her. I mean, she's, imagine she's, she, can, she doesn't need to work. She's retired. But mm. her idea of a good time was to keep teaching. So when my mother passed away, we started a scholarship fund. And it was to support graduating seniors. It was in the Quad City area. Uh, seniors who were going into education who could make a difference like Mother did. 
WorldNationGroup.com is the uh, web address. You can find out more about Cynthia Herring. But I, I want to flash back uh, in, in just the few seconds we have left there because uh, you were not always Cynthia Herring. You became <laughs> the artist uh, known as Destiny Quibble. And took your show onto the road, onto the streets of Chicago as a busker. You're right. That Those are my roots. And uh, I became the poster child for legalizing street performance in Chicago. But of course, you know, I couldn't do that alone. Uh, there was a wonderful attorney, Rob Winbrand, and he did pro bono work for artists. And what was so incredible is he uh, donated his time. So we got street performance legalized and some people support their families from uh, busking. Cynthia Herring, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to visit us during your uh, time in the area here. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I'm Michael Lyon. Thanks,